what's up. So welcome back once again to the video and today we are going to discuss tip number 5 or you can say type number 5 for organic conversions. Okay. So let us start with the type. The type says that you have to increase the number of carbon atoms by one unit. Now what do you mean when I say I have to increase the carbon atoms by one unit? It's like for example you are starting with a compound like this and you have to go to a compound with three carbon atoms. You started with two and you want to go to three. Other way around, let's say you start with three and you have to go to a compound with four carbon atoms. I'm not talking about doubling the size of the chain. Like it is two, I'm not talking about going directly to four. I'm not talking about three going directly to six, no. I'm just talking about increase the number of carbon atoms by one. Now there are two procedures, but in this chapter I will be covering just one procedure which is like very easy, which is by using cyanide. This is although very very bad, you, you eat potassium cyanide and you'll be, you'll be dead in a second. Although this is bad, but we do not use this harsh thing, we do not use cyanide, rather we will be using some other form of cyanide and we will try to do the conversions. Okay? So without wasting time, let us directly start with the questions. So all these questions I have taken from the chapter Halloween's Halloween's. I have kept these two in a separate box and tell you the reason later on why I keep them separate. Okay. Let us quickly start with the first question, which is how to convert ethyl chloride. So let me write CH3, CH2, CN. And this I have to convert to propanoic acid. Propanoic acid is CH3, CH2, CH. Now wait. Take a deep breath and see whether this conversion belongs to the type that I have discussed here or not. How many carbon atoms are there? Two carbon atoms. You don't have to worry for CL or any other function group that is there. But there are two carbon atoms. In the product, there are one, two, three carbon atoms. Now some students need to get confused like, ma'am, this is a functional group. Why are you taking this as a part of chain also? But remember, whenever a COH or COOH, whenever these functional groups are present in any particular chain, these will be considered as the part of chain itself. Okay? So they will not just be regarded as functional group, they will be considered as a part of main chain also. So if I say how many carbon atoms are there, you know 1, 2, 3. 3 carbon atoms are there in the main chain. Right? Now see what is the procedure. You have ethyl chloride, this is given to you and it's really not tough to convert Cl into Cn. How can I convert Cl to Cn? So what I want to say is, I want to add something so that I can get Cn, a cyanide thing here. So think, 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 it is given in the chapter Halloaltines, Halloaltines that you can add KCl. Now KCl is K plus Cl minus, so this Cl will attack here and this Cl will go away. If you don't want to go into the mechanism, you just have to remember on adding KCl, Cl goes away and Cl comes here. That's it. So we got this thing. And you know what is this known as? This is known as propane nitride. Done? Now one very very good thing you will be learning in the chapter amines if you have done it good enough. If you have not done it, you will be learning in the chapter amines that if we do the hydrolysis, I'm talking about hydrolysis of cyanide. The complete hydrolysis. Okay, let us go step by step. So if we do partial hydrolysis, cyanide gets converted to amine, which is CH3, CH2, COH. Understood? So this might be a question that how to convert ethyl chloride to this compound. So I told you from going, in going from here to here also, you will first count the number of carbon atoms. Now if you see here two carbon atoms, here three carbon atoms, so we have to increase the carbon atom and that's very easy by adding KCl. So if you do the hydrolysis, you get this amount. But if I want full hydrolysis, you add more water here. Now if you do acidic hydrolysis, even this goes away and it becomes carboxylic acid. Okay, so this I went into 
you the detail by taking in one more question. Now, if you do not want to take this question, you simply say when you get sin i, then you put h3o plus, you will simply convert this to COH. Okay? So, you first go from Cl to Cl, Cl to hydrolysis, you get COH. I hope this question is clear. So, this was question number one, which I discussed. Let us move to the second question. Which is benzyl alcohol? So, if you do not know the meaning of this word, okay, let's uh, skip this question for time being. Let us move to the next question. This I'll cover later on because I'll tell you more theory about that. So, question is ethanol or ethanol, which is CH3CH2OH, and this has to be converted to propane nitrile. This is the same compound that we have just written. Propane, now don't do this, man. This is seriously bad. People write propane nitrile as this. This is wrong. I told you. If carbon containing function group is present, if carbon containing function group is present, it will be included in the chain itself. So this becomes 1, 2, 3, 4. Butane nitrile. But what I want is propane nitrile. So I'll write it like this. Understood? So nomenclature has to be clear before you do the conversion. Think, think, think. Is there increase in one carbon atom? Yeah. 1, 2, 1, 3. Now what to do? Process remains the same. Let us increase the carbon atom. Now the question is, how can we increase carbon atom with OH being present in the group? Now see. I can simply add H2. Because I told you in my last video, last to last video, every video I say this thing. Whenever you are in doubt, whenever you are in confusion, close your eyes and think about alkyl halide. I know how to convert alcohol to alkyl halide. I will treat it with HBr. Now this Br comes here and we get CH3CH2Br. Now something good is happening, right? Now the next process should be Br can be easily removed by adding KCl. So I do CH3, CH2, Cl. Uh -huh. And this is the final answer that I got. Right? So this was easy. Understood? Now let me move further to the next question. Now the question that I have written is benzyl alcohol. So another question I have is ptolemy and ptolemy. So let me tell you certain theory about benzyl and then we do the question. See, this is Ptolemy. Am I right? Everyone knows this thing. Now the position, this is the benzene thing. The carbon directly attached to the benzene, the train, is known as benzylic carbon. Do you remember the carbon directly attached to the benzene train is known as benzylic carbon. Okay? So if I write what is benzylic it should be something like this because this is a carbon which is directly attached to benzene ring. So this is benzylic carbon. Understood? Now the question is how to convert benzyl alcohol? So first we need to know what is benzyl alcohol. So first you know what is benzyl? This. Since it is alcohol, you simply put OH. This is okay and we have to convert it to phenyl ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid first let's draw. CH3, COOH. So this is ethanoic acid. Now since we have a phenyl group, phenyl cannot be present here. So this should be, hydrogen should be removed. And we get phenyl ethanoic acid. Wait, take a deep breath. Is this question belonging to this type? Increase the number of carbon atom by one unit? One is here, one is here, benzene is here, benzene is here. Here we have OH, here we have COH. Yes, so the category is same. Now what to do? Same thing. Just put HBr. First we remove the alcohol. The alcohol is bad, right? Alcohol is bad, right? Again I am saying. So remove this alcohol and convert it to alkyl halide. This is simple. CHUBr. Done. Now you treat it with casein. What you will be getting? CH2CN. Then complete hydrolysis. So that's it. What is so tough in this question? And this question has been asked in more exams like so many times. So mark it as important and I hope this is clear to you. 
Then with this question, let us move to two other questions which I have written separately. Questions are simple, but I tell you one simple trick and then we will continue with the question. Let me take this question. How to convert Ptolemy? So Ptolemy is this. And this has to be converted to, oh my god, again the same thing. Benzyl and Now, you might be thinking, ma'am, the question doesn't belong to the category that you just told us. Because here is one carbon, one carbon, one benzene, one benzene. Right? I totally agree this doesn't belong to the category that I mentioned here. That is the reason I have enclosed it in a particular box. Now, why did I write this question here? This is because, see, whenever you have a benzylic thing, and you want to put one OH of any group onto the benzylic position. The only thing that can help you is God. That is the only thing. And who is God in our organic chemistry? Sunlight. Sunlight is God in our organic chemistry. So we have to do something to this so that we can do something at the benzylic position. Now how is that to be done? You just put chlorine in the presence of sunlight. When you put chlorine in the presence of sunlight, nothing happens to the benzene ring. Nothing at all. God is very selective, you know. Now chlorine will simply be directed to this position. And see how I changed from Ptolemy. I removed one hydrogen and I added one C. Okay, so whenever you want to change something, Ptolemy has to be converted to something and you have to play with the benzylic position. Always do Cl2 in the presence of sunlight. Sun is always there, you can get sunlight easily, right? So this you got. Now the question is nothing. You put aqueous KOH or you put aqueous NOH and you get the answer. Clear? I hope this question was also easy. Now let me move to the last question. So the last question that we are having now is how do we convert Ptolemy? Once again, Ptolemy has to be converted to phenylethanoic acid. Let's start. We have Ptolemy and it is to be converted to phenylethanoic acid. I just changed the question. Rather than doing benzyl alcohol to phenylethanoic acid, this question is not there in NCRT, but I thought let's practice it out. So phenylethanoic acid will be this. Now think, I am being smart here. Is this question belonging to this category? One carbon, one carbon, one benzene, one benzene, but COH is extra, so I hope the question is clear that this belongs to this category. But if I have to introduce one COH here, one carbon has to be introduced, you have to play with the benzylic position. Now how to play with benzylic position? Simply add Cl2 in the presence of sunlight and you get CH2, Cl. Done. Now things are okay because as soon as Cl is there, we are like, wow, this can be that easy. Put KCN, you get CH2. This is the simplest thing. Right? So see, if I would not have told you the smallest trick of introducing something at the benzylic position, you would be confused. And if I didn't tell you that, it's easy to introduce a COH or COH or anything by just using KCN. Things become pretty much easy. Right? So here comes an end to the video where we have discussed all the five questions related to NCRT. Hello again, hello again. I hope you started something from the video. Just practice these questions and wait for my next video.